for coming. We have just finished our first of the year meeting of all concern to prepare, prepare for hurricane season, which started June 1st and goes through November the 30th. That's six months. Uh, as of today, there are no hurricanes in the Atlantic, uh, but uh, that could change uh, by this afternoon. But uh, we are well prepared and, and well experienced in our meeting that we had just a couple of hours ago. We, uh, we were in the room there assembled with others from the counties, the coastal counties on the phone with us, uh, going over the things that we want to accomplish, the pitfalls, the dangers, and improvements we've made uh, that we make every year during this time. So to describe those and answer the questions, we have everyone assembled here. But what I, the message I'd like to give to the citizens is, is first, don't, don't wait until a hurricane's coming to find out what you're supposed to do. This is an excellent booklet. Uh, it is uh, prepared by the Emergency Management Division, Director Kim Stenson, uh, who could an answer questions about it. But it has maps. It says to know where your zones are, know what you're supposed to do, know where the exit routes are, and uh, primarily follow the instructions and listen to the instructions of those officials involved rather than uh, social media and, uh, and, and be very careful and, and know about it in advance so that you, they were not caught off guard. We want everyone to be prepared and everyone to be able to act as our own emergen, emergency management uh, professional. So with that, I'll call in uh, these in succession, starting with Director Robert Woods. Thank you, Governor. Good morning, I'm Robert Woods. I'm the Director of the South Carolina Department of Public Safety. <clears throat> the Department of Public Safety, working with its partner, South Carolina Department of Transportation, began our preparation efforts for the upcoming hurricane season in January as we physically checked every route, every evacuation route in the state, ensuring that the proper signage was in place, and also confirming that we had adequate traffic control point staffing. Uh, we followed that up by meetings with both our state and local partners in each of the hurricane regions, the northern around Myrtle Beach, to the central from Charleston to the southern in Beaufort to make sure that the plans were clearly understood by our supporting agencies and that all the necessary resources, all the necessary personnel were properly committed to the mission. Uh, we will finish our preparation efforts with our full scale exercise, which will be on June 17th, which we will, working with DOT and our other state partners, test our reversal plans for each one of the hurricane regions. Uh, one of our points of emphasis consistently over the years has been this. Understand that the evacuation plan and the success of the evacuation plan is based on each individual citizen knowing what their evacuation route is and taking that evacuation route. We need to be able to disperse all that traffic throughout the evacuation network in order to effectively keep that traffic moving. So that's a tremendous point of emphasis for us. So to conclude, I'll say this. As we finish our preparation efforts, we ask all South Carolinians to begin their preparation efforts. Make sure that you know your route. There's a number of resources that are available that, that define what, what uh, evacuation zone you're in and what evacuation route you'll need to take along with other great advice on, on, on other preparatory actions you need to make prior to evacuation. So please take, uh, take advantage of those resources. I know Director Stenson will, will outline a number of those. With that, I'll uh, turn it over to Secretary Hall from the Department of Transportation. Secretary Hall. Thank you, Director Woods and Governor McMaster. The South Carolina Department of Transportation has uh, close to 4,000 employees that are ready to respond, react, and recover uh, our state's infrastructure from uh, any pending natural disaster that may come our way. With regards to uh, the hurricane uh, season here, as Director Woods mentioned, we are preparing for a full-scale statewide exercise coming up here shortly uh, to make sure that we're all ready and synced up uh, with regards to our operational uh, procedures with the reversals. In particular, uh, we will be looking at the I-26, the new and improved I-26 reversal plan uh, that we implemented and developed in 2020. Uh, as you may know or as you may recall, that reversal was simplified by, first of all, shortening it by 25 miles, bringing it uh, up I-26 from the 526 interchange uh, 
more uh, to where it actually starts at the Nexton Parkway uh, interchange uh, in the Somerville area instead of the 526 area, basically to ensure that the, uh, the Charleston region can continue to uh, navigate as it, as it traditionally would uh, prior to a reversal. So the new reversal, 25 miles shorter, starting at the Nexton Parkway. The, the uh, reversal will be very easy to navigate as you travel up 26, heading towards the Columbia area. You'll, it'll, it'll appear that I-26 forks, and you can either take uh, the left fork or the right fork, and you will essentially either stay on traditional 26, uh, heading up towards Columbia, or travel over a crossover to the reverse sides of 26. In addition to shortening and improving that, uh, that entry point, that main entry point into the reversal, we've added two additional entry points along the way uh, so that it, it will add convenience for the motorist as they travel uh, up the reversal side to be able to regain entry into the reverse sides of the lane. Uh, with that, uh, we uh, stand ready to implement and uh, do whatever we need to do to ensure rapid response and recovery to any storm event. And with that, turn it back to the governor. General McCarty. Thank you, Governor. Uh, on behalf of all the employees of the Military Department of South Carolina and certainly to our soldiers and airmen that are our primary responders to an emergency such as a hurricane, just want to assure the citizens of the great state of South Carolina that uh, we are prepared for a hurricane or other events this year. We, on a continuing basis, uh, look at our uh, performance on past events. We review to determine where there may be issues or concerns that we need to address. Uh, we have done that. Uh, we also uh, have assessed our personnel this year. Uh, between our Army and Air, we have a little over 12,000 soldiers and airmen in those two organizations. We do have both Army and Air National Guardsmen currently deployed. However, we have ample resources to be able to cover our missions as identified by the state all hazards plan. Uh, we've been in contact with the state and federal agencies that we work with. Uh, we've reviewed their plans and we support their plans and we're confident that we're in a position to be able to uh, fulfill our needs there. In the past, and I would anticipate possibly if we have a storm this year, uh, we may have to, as we look to address any shortages that we may have in, in certain type of units, our military police, our engineers and aviation assets. Uh, we will reach out to other states that have that. That's through the Emergency Management Assistance Compact. We've already made that initial contact and coordination there. I feel confident that those resources would be available if we were to need those. In addition, we have a rehearsal schedule for next Saturday to pull in all the, the players and to ensure our plan is synced and we're ready to execute. Thank you. Thank you, General. Director Michael Leach. Thank you, Governor. DSS is uh, charged with uh, being the lead state agency for mass care of our citizens uh, during emergencies. Uh, this means on top of our day-to-day -day operations of, of helping children, adults, and, and vulnerable populations, we work alongside our county emergency management and coordinate with volunteer agencies such as the American Red Cross, Salvation Army, and many others to provide sheltering, feeding, and distribution of goods and services to effective South Carolina populations. We will be utilizing the latest CDC, DHEC, and American Red Cross guidance and procedures for safety precautions uh, for mixed population environments. There will be COVID screening uh, that, that will occur prior to individuals entering uh, the shelter and multiple times daily, as well as if someone leaves and returns to the shelter. All hurricane evacuation shelters have pre-staged PPE on hand and extra hand sanitizing efforts for staff and citizens. And thanks to our partners at DHEC, we've added capability to have COVID testing and vaccinations should our citizens request either while staying in a, a South Carolina Red Cross managed shelter. Um, no one should worry about uh, what shelter they go to if they have a pet. Um, through our partnership with Clemson University Livestock Poultry Health, we'll make sure that everyone uh, with a pet, no matter what kind, is taken care of and does not need to worry about them and where to go uh, to weather a storm. Due to shelter capacity, some pets may be sheltered in another location, like a, a local veterinarian's office, but rest assured all pets will be uh, accommodated to the best of, of our abilities. A um, couple reminders, whenever citizens um, uh, can do to help uh, their pet, bring crates or carriers for their pet's comfort, photos of the, the owner and their pet in case of separation, any documents and medical records will greatly help in safeguarding their pet. 
And for our citizens, uh, making sure uh, if they have to go to a shelter, bringing prescription medications, extra clothing, pillows, blankets, hygiene supplies, other comfort items, important documents, and anything needed for children, diapers, formula, toys, and any items needed for family members with unique needs. Thank you. Thank you. Director Ed Simmer, Department of Health Environmental Control. Thank you, Governor. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ed Simmer, the Director of the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control. Good to be with you. Uh, we've been working on planning for the next hurricane uh, ever since last fall, uh, when we were very fortunate to have a season without any significant hurricanes. Uh, we're not assuming that for this year, and we are doing everything we can to make sure the people of South Carolina are ready uh, in case we do have a severe hurricane this year. Uh, very fortunate to be able to work with, this, with the agency directors uh, who are here today and their teams and certainly the governor and his staff. Uh, we are coordinating and collaborating very closely with them to make sure that the state is ready. Uh, three areas in particular that we are focused on. First is medical needs shelters. These are shelters for people who have uh, medical needs such as, for example, a piece of medical equipment that needs a guaranteed power supply. Uh, perhaps they have medicine that needs cold storage. And so if they went to a regular shelter and that shelter lost power, they would have a problem. So we have specific medical needs shelters that have a guaranteed power supply so they can be taken care of. Uh, we've also recently partnered with uh, some inpatient hospice facilities. We're very fortunate to have them as partners now that will increase the number of medical needs shelters we're able to open uh, coming this hurricane season. Uh, we would certainly ask citizens not just to come to one of these facilities, please call our number or otherwise reach out and we will screen them, determine if they do need that medical needs shelter, and we can then help them arrange transportation to get to that location. A second area we're very focused on is uh, rapid response after a storm passes. Uh, there's a lot of different things that can happen after a storm that pose both health and environmental risks. We have ready response teams that are ready to go out on a moment's notice as soon as the risk is passed, working collaboratively with our local emergency managers um, and local governments to make sure that if there's a dam, for example, that's at risk of breaching or a storm water, or, I'm sorry, a uh, sewage facility that has been inundated or you know, a hospital that's had damage that we can go out and help them assess the risk and help uh, develop a mitigation plan as quickly as possible. Finally, we're also working with our healthcare facilities across the state to make sure that uh, we are set that we can move patients quickly. If we need to evacuate patients from a hospital or other type of healthcare facility in front of the storm, and that we get those facilities up and running as quickly as possible after the threat has passed to ensure that individuals have medical care available, especially emergency and urgent care, if they need it. From the standpoint of what we would ask citizens to do, number one, very importantly, is if you've not been vaccinated against COVID-19, please get vaccinated before the storm comes. That's very important. Uh, you know, if you're in a shelter with lots of folks and you're vaccinated, you're relatively safe. That's why we don't have to wear masks today, because we've been vaccinated. But if you're in that shelter and you're not vaccinated, your risk is much higher. So please get vaccinated. That's a very important part of hurricane preparation this year. The second thing is if you're, if you're in an evacuation zone, please evacuate. Don't wait. Get out. There are lots of different threats to your health after a hurricane. Flood waters can have a lot of different toxic substances. There's different types of infections that you can catch from flood waters, from mosquitoes, other things immediately after the storm. And as we said, we may or may not be able to get you medical care immediately after that storm. You know, so if a tree falls on you, you're trying to do some work and you get injured, we may not be able to get you the medical care that you need as quickly as we would like. So get your COVID vaccine, evacuate when the order is given, and it'll make it, things go much better for everyone. With that, sir. I'll turn it back Thank to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Doctor. Director Kim Stenson, Emergency Management Division. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Kim Stenson, uh, State EMD. A uh, couple of points. One is uh, one of our biggest strengths here in South Carolina is the outstanding team that has been assembled over the last several years that has trained together, planned together, exercised together, and operated together. Uh, we've had 10 major disasters uh, in the last eight years. And having that experience uh, places us in an excellent operational posture uh, should a hurricane hit South Carolina sometime this year. Uh, from 2015 to 2019, we've seen significant damage uh, from hurricanes, either from direct landfalls or uh, glancing blows and pretty significant inland flooding. Uh, it's very important uh, to note that hurricanes are not strictly a coastal event, but they can uh, 
strike fire inland, and it's really a South Carolina event. You can end up having hurricane force winds all the way up to the North Carolina border, which is very significant. So it's not just a coastal event. Uh, as we refine our plans uh, to make them more efficient, uh, it's a good idea for people at home to do the same. And this year we've launched a new website uh, for people to use as a quick reference uh, tool to begin their uh, hurricane planning. And the new site, it's hurricane.sc, uh, hurricane.sc. It's highly interactive and adapted, adaptive and much easier to use than a digital version of the hurricane guide, which uh, the governor had pointed out earlier. this year by NOAA and in times of emergency uh, timing is extremely important and having this guide at your fingertips all the time will be very important it'll help everybody make informed decisions about their personal safety uh, again that's hurricane.sc it uh, should be fairly easy to remember and that's why it was designed that way uh, this new site is a companion to our existing site secmd.org and also our South Carolina Emergency Manager mobile application. Uh, but they will continue to serve as hubs for information uh, in real time uh, when we uh, actually have disasters. The printed uh, guide has been distributed through newspapers from the uh, coast back to Columbia. Uh, it's available in English and Spanish. It's also available at Walgreens statewide at coastal DMVs at uh, welcome centers along the interstate and uh, also download at SEND.org and at hurricane.sc. So in summary, we need to encourage all our uh, citizens to get prepared and these tools will help them. And as the governor said, it'll help them become their own personal emergency manager. Thank you. Thank you. And I would like to remind those, as, as was uh, Direct Stinson mentioned, this is not just a, a coastal situation in 1989, Hurricane Hugo came from the coast, blasted through Columbia, and knocked down big trees in Charlotte, downtown Charlotte. So uh, we, we need to be prepared. And again, on the, on the government side, the state and local, our agencies are prepared and preparing more uh, every day, and we'll be practicing continually. But we would urge all citizens, everyone ought to have one of these, either have one of these brochures or go online and take a look. I, I'd like to see one of these at least in every, particularly vacation homes and hotels and things along the coast especially because there's a lot of interesting things in here that ordinarily you wouldn't even think about. And once you read it, uh, you've got it and you can protect yourself, your loved ones. So I'd ask everyone to, like the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts, be, be prepared. And number two, uh, listen to the authorities uh, in the for sources of information and not gossip in what may appear uh, in social media because a lot of time and effort has gone into figuring out the type of precision and uh, coordination necessary to keep people out of harm's way or to get them out of harm's way. And everyone needs to take advantage of the, the, the uh, intellectual effort that went into and practical effort that went into getting this done. With that, are there any questions? Oh. Dig. Well, it's available uh, just about everywhere. I, I know there are over a thousand, I presume, yes, over a thousand locations uh, that, that uh, and there's plenty of vaccine available. It, all it takes is it, it, now would be a good time if you want one. Now's a good time to do yes. that. Would you like to yes, elaborate? Sir. Yeah, we have lots of vaccine available, locations you can get the vaccine all over the state. Uh, certainly, we understand people have questions, may have concerns about the vaccine. We certainly encourage them to get those questions answered. It's very appropriate that they have questions. Um, but go to reliable sources like cdc.gov, like scdhec.gov, our website. Lots of information about the vaccine. Call our number. Um, you know, we will get you the answers you need to help ally any concerns you have about the vaccine. But it's very safe. It's very effective. It's been given to you know, over 100 million people in the United States with very few significant adverse effects. So there's no good reason not to get it, but lots of good reasons to get it. Thank you. Hi, Dr. Leach. Um, oh, over here, over here. Oh, 
Oh, Director right. Leach, uh, can you expand upon uh, vaccinations within shelters, how that work, what brand will be available? Yeah, I, I will also, Director Sivir, might be able to uh, assist with that. But yes, um, uh, on the front end, we want to make sure that uh, you know, folks are uh, tested and that uh, vaccinations are available, uh, potentially post, uh, uh, um, post storm uh, will probably be when that would probably uh, occur. Um, if there are concerns as far as, um, you know, uh, health and, and uh, you know, uh, if somebody is saying that, hey, I, I'm feeling bad that we will have the opportunity within the shelters for isolation. Um, and making sure that there's ongoing testing uh, with that. Do you have yeah. any? As much as we can, we plan to use the Janssen vaccine. Can in you the, the general? I'm sorry, yes I can, sorry. Uh, as much as we possibly can, we're planning to use the Janssen vaccine in the shelters because that way people don't have to come back, which you know, in the immediately after a storm may be hard. So as much as we can, we're gonna use the single dose Janssen vaccine in the shelters immediately after the storm has passed. Director Leach, can you talk a little bit more about the pet preparation? That's a, a major barrier for some folks not wanting to evacuate. Can you, I guess my, do you have advice for folks to maybe get their animals microchipped ahead of time? And also, if their animals are in a separate location, is there going to be a way for them to, you know, know exactly where that pet is and monitor them? Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah. So that's a, a great suggestion as far as the, the microchip. But yes, we uh, have been uh, working on this at Dorian, for example. Um, you know, when people, uh, we had shelters where people were able to bring uh, their pets, um, as well as uh, making sure that we're uh, putting um, the pets in local veterinary offices and make connection with, with the citizens for sure. Uh, you know, just make sure you have everything ready for your pets, uh, in, you know, uh, is, is really important. Um, and, and for, you know, our, our citizens, I mean, you just have to, you, you really need to think through and be prepared what you need to bring uh, if you have to go to a shelter um, uh, when, that, when, uh, when that's ready. So again, medications and, and clothing and pillows and blankets and documents and things that are really important to you uh, need to be brought as well. And I would imagine that would include making sure that your animals have their vaccinations up to date, should they need to be put in a facility like a vet, a veterinarian. That, that would be very helpful, yes. Thank you. Okay, next. Yes, sir. Any emphasis you guys want to put on use of generators during storms? I heard a statistic, I think it was out of Florida recently, that there was more death due to carbon monoxide than there was in storm surge during the time. Yes, and unfortunately that's always a problem, and we've had actually had deaths here in South Carolina for that. But certainly if you're going to use a generator, uh, put it in a well-ventilated area outside of the, of the home, uh, and obviously, you know, do the safety checks on that. But Unfortunately, in many cases, uh, people take the generators, they move them in their garage or inside the house somewhere, and it just uh, adds up to uh, just terrible effects there. So we would definitely emphasize if you want to use a generator, make sure that you use it safely. Is that an issue that we've seen a lot of here in South Carolina, would you, would you say? Uh, not a lot, but we've had several fatalities uh, over the last several years. Uh, and it happens, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, other than hurricane situations. You know, anytime the power goes out, it, it happens. Uh, sometimes in the winter storms, that sort of thing. Uh, so it's, it's definitely something to, to be very careful of and make sure that you use those generators safely. Kim, you might want to make it back, back the electricity into the lines when the power companies are working on the lines that you hook it to your house. Oh, yeah, there's uh, also, again, it all goes back to the, uh, the safety piece of it is to, if you're, uh, Electricity goes out and you hook up the, the generator improperly. When the uh, electricity goes back on, then you, know, you may have a problem there as well. And a lot of these uh, full house generators right now, they have transfer switches on there that take care of that. But on the average generator, that probably doesn't have that capability. Full scale exercise on June 17th. What should people expect to see when that happens? They'll just see a larger presence of uh, highway patrol and DOT in particular along I-26 in the Midlands, uh, US 501 in O'Ree County, and uh, US 278 and US 21 down in Beaufort. So lanes will not actually be reversed. Uh, there, there will be a, a press release that we'll do ahead of that jointly with DOT to make sure that folks are uh, uh, aware of that in a timely fashion but you will see a larger presence of both DOT and Highway Patrol at the roadside. Secretary, anything? 
One other thing about carbon monoxide poisoning people need to know. There's no warning. You can't smell it. You can't see it. Basically, it just makes you tired, you go to sleep, and you never wake up. Um, so there's no way to know that you're getting carbon monoxide poisoning, which is why people have to be so careful with that. The other challenge is carbon monoxide poisoning is not easy to treat once you have it. And immediately after the storm, getting effective treatment for carbon monoxide poisoning may be very challenging. That's why people have to be so careful. Keep those generators outside and anything that's burning fuel outside of their homes and make sure that that carbon monoxide is not being pulled into their home where it could kill them or their family. Thank you. Governor, um, can you talk about um, utility preparation? I know there's nobody here from Dominion or anything like that, but I'm assuming you've been in touch with that. And you maybe talk about uh, the, the preparation on the ground from power yes. companies and utilities. Yeah, that's an uh, ongoing uh, coordination. Uh, the Office of Regulatory Staff uh, coordinates very regularly with, with all the power providers. Uh, when we actually have an event, we'll have uh, at least some of the power provider representatives here in the SEOC, the State Emergency Operations Center, to affect coordination there. Uh, but they've got some very extensive plans that they have put together to help themselves and help each other. Uh, and you've often seen that, you know, when we have an event here in South Carolina, uh, that you'll have uh, utilities come from other, uh, other states uh, in huge convoys to come down. So they've got their own, uh, their own plans, and they've also got their own, basically, emergency management compacts to, uh, to back each other up. So, again, that's an ongoing operation. More questions? Hearing none, thank you very much.